You've never backed down from anything in your life. Cyberpunk just got one of its biggest updates that it's probably going to get. Besides Phantom Liberty, I think adding FSR 3 to the game just changed everything for everyone. Even if you don't have the highest end hardware, or you just don't have the time or money to go put into a better PC, AMD FSR 3 with their frame generation will help you. So earlier today there was an update for Cyberpunk that came out with AMD FSR 3, which basically added their new AI upscale model along with frame generation. Now before, as you can see here, the only options you had were DLSS, now there's AF FSR 3 frame generation along with their new upscaling. Now this is a huge step because it now allows people to play on lower end PCs like me. I run a GTX 1650 on a laptop and I can run this game comfortably using frame generation. You can see all my settings are pretty much low, low to medium, but mostly low. And with quality FSR and frame generation turned on, I can comfortably get about 60-ish frames per second on my piece, on my laptop. And I'll just let the video show for itself. It is a little laggy because my recording was all messed up, so bear with me. But if you want to try this, I recommend it. This update brings a huge change to people who don't have the hardware to play, especially if you don't have an RTX card because then you don't have ray tracing and all this other fancy stuff. Now if you've been trying to play Cyberpunk for a while but your PC just doesn't let you, this will fix that. As you can see here I load in, it is very laggy, it's just the recording, but like you can see when I go in the menu it's completely fine. Um, but when you're actually playing, you get good frame rates, it is very laggy, I'm sorry about that. So I'm not going to show a whole lot of my gameplay, but you can see it looks fine. You can't see how smooth it is, but there is a huge increase with frame generation with FSR 3, and it just makes it so much better. I've been waiting to play through the game, especially on Phantom Liberty DLC with my PC because I don't like playing it on console, even though it looks amazing. However, being able to do this on PC will change everything I do about the game. Like I've just I've always wanted to play it on PC, and now that FSR 3 has come out, I actually can do that. Now, if you've been waiting for a while because you don't have the PC requirements to play this game comfortably, I recommend trying this out, even if you don't have a, a RTX card or a GTX card. The FSR 3 frame generation will work on any graphics card, whether it's GTX, RTX, AMD, Intel, it should work on all of them. So similar to NVIDIA DLSS, it basically adds a frame in between each other frame and makes your game that much more smoother. Now, a lot of other people have been using lossless scaling. Now, lossless scaling is good, and I tried it myself. However, in my own testing for my own PC, trying to use lossless scaling on Cyberpunk just resulted in a laggy, horrible mess. Now, I'm not saying lossless scaling is bad. That was just my experience due to my low-end hardware. But with FSR 3 being available on Cyberpunk now, as just as the developers are being pulled from Cyberpunk as an entire game to focus on other projects, this is a huge la final update or patch to bring out. So now, if you've been waiting to play because you don't have the hardware for it, now you should try it. At least boot it up, see if it does anything for you. If it doesn't, then I'm sorry. But for this right now, even if you have a good enough PC, and you just don't have DLSS, this will still help you if you have a good PC. You'll still get more frames with your graphic settings. Now don't get me wrong, Cyberpunk is not an easy game to run, and I know a lot of people can't really run this game that well. However, this update being one of probably the only last few updates this game will ever receive is game changing for many people. Even people who already play the game without problems, this will help you out still. Even if you got a 4090, a 4080, a 4070, a 3070, a 2060, it doesn't matter. Even even non-RTX cards, you could have a 980 and this thing will still help you. Now, you won't be if you have a lower end graphics card, you won't be getting the frames of a 4090 here on max ray tracing settings, obviously. Move movements nice and smooth. Now, obviously the graphic fidelity is not there. However, this is still not that bad. 
yeah, it doesn't look as good as you would want it to be, but if you just want to play through it and you don't want to have to crank down your resolution all the way, this is the way to go. I think this update brings a huge change to how people would play this game if they don't have the proper hardware to do so. And this just changes everything. Now let's try dynamic resolution scaling, because I haven't tried this yet. Target frames per second, we're going to drop this down to 120, because that's the lower refresh rate for my monitor, and let's see what it can do. I doubt we're going to get anywhere close to it. Actually, I almost want to say it feels faster. I almost want to say it's a little bit more responsive, because it's not using FSR as much. Like, this is a lot more responsive, and it looks better because it's constantly going up and down to reach your target frame rate. It still doesn't even look that bad. But if we just go back to quality on the low preset, because I think quality would look the best. Yeah, that is a huge difference. Now, my frame rate has maybe dropped by no less than 5. And this still looks good. At least running on my hardware. Obviously, this will vary for what PC you run. But for my hardware, this looks really good being able to run this somewhat smooth without issue.